Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Now, while I do have a gambit of my own glazes that I like to kind of keep in stock down here and reuse over and over again because I make some big buckets of glaze. Every now and then I go on glazy and I get super, super infatuated with making a new glaze and then I pick out like 10 different glazes and then I almost never make them. But this time, longtime subscriber of the channel, Susan, actually sent me this glaze recipe. I will fully admit, I have an entire glaze book here full of glazes that I haven't even tested yet. This is actually my backup book. My real book is somewhere in the studio that you can't see, you little thief. But I do take it a little bit more serious whenever you guys send me a glaze and go, hey, this glaze worked for me, or I'll be testing it, or maybe you should try it out. And today, that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, for any of you that saw the thumbnail and said, I wanna make that glaze, or I want the recipe to that glaze, there's two things. Number one, here's the glaze recipe right here. That way you can test it and mess with it yourself. That way you can click that like button and you can go ahead and test it yourself. You ain't gotta wait for the rest of the video. I mean, if I were you, I'd watch the rest of the episode because I'm about to test this glaze for you on multiple different clay bodies and multiple different combinations of glaze. I'm pretty much gonna do all the work for you. But just kind of as a get out of jail free car, I always like to put the glaze recipe here and at the very bottom of this video in the description below. That that way you guys can write it down, you can mess with it, you can test it yourselves. That way you don't have to watch the rest of the video and spend the entire evening looking at my dirty potter face. The glaze we're going to be testing today is called Oil Spot Red. And this glaze actually piqued my interest because not many oil spot glazes come about without having a combination of glazes together. The high majority of oil spot glazes in the world are usually some type of dark glaze and some type of heavy zinc or lithium glaze combined together and layered on top of each other. And this is kind of just a one shot, so I'm really interested in seeing what this will produce. This glaze was actually given to us by Susan, a longtime dirty potter and subscriber of the channel. It is a cone six glaze. I I believe it can be used in oxidation or reduction. Today we're gonna to be testing in oxidation and the maker of the glaze, or at least the person who posted it on Glazy, is, <laughs> oh, oh, come on. No, that can't be, hold on. Let me, act let me actually check Glazy real quick. The person who posted this glaze is named Jake Glaze. That's either a joke name or the best name I've ever heard in my entire life. Okay, let's get started. That actually wasn't too bad. We only did about five batches, and every batch is around 100 grams, so this is technically only about 500 grams of product. Of course, we're gonna sieve this with a mini sieve, and we're gonna put it into another bucket and all that, but as it stands, I'm actually really curious to see what comes out of this, because firstly, I've never used Frit 3195. I usually use Frit 3134, because that's usually the standard cone five or six frit that most people use when they make their glazes. So I'm really, really, really excited to see what comes out of this. I might even use this for some other cone six glazes and see how it affects the glaze. But for now, since it's in this recipe, we're gonna see what it does and how it reacts to our clay body. We got our sieve, our throwaway brush, and our little baby mixer here. So we're gonna start sieving this. That actually wasn't too bad. It's one of the reasons I'm so skeptical about this glaze, is because the recipe shows no deflocculant, there's no like bentonite in this really. It's just like Frit 3195 and a bunch of regular chemicals, which is making me super skeptical because I've never used Frit 3195. I've only ever really used Frit 3134 or I've ever used Frit 3110 for crystalline glazes. We're gonna glaze some bowls. And of course, as we usually do whenever we test out a glaze, we have a stoneware test style, we have a red stone or brown clay test style, and we also have a porcelain test style. Keep in mind that this is B-Mix with grog for anyone that's wondering. I know that B-Mix is a heavily used clay in the ceramic art world. And we also have some real testers because I don't think these really do justice to seeing how well the glaze actually works. So let's make this one the new glaze with floating blue. These two can be the glaze by themselves because there's a really nice slip relief on these two bowls and I really want to see how this glaze works with at least a little bit of texture. Although these two bowls are be mixed with grog in them. This one can be Jeff Campana's gray and this one will be Lumos. I really want to see how this super dark glaze reacts with one of the lightest glazes that I have.
Okay, so these are the glazes by themselves. These are V-Mix with Grog. And this one is just V-Mix by itself. No Grog. This is the glaze over Jeff Campana's gray. This is the glaze over my floating blue. This is the glaze over Lumos. And this is the glaze over my Digital Fire Ultra Clear. Somebody put that glaze on a little bit too thick over the clear recipe. I don't know who, I don't know who did that. We should, we should find that guy. And of course we have our three test styles. One on a porcelain clay. Oh, one on a porcelain clay. One on a redstone clay for the darker clay body. And one on another bee mix with grog. Just because I really want to have an actual test style of the bee mix with grog, although I do have other testers. Those are just real products to see how they kind of fit on a real product. While these are honestly just te test test tiles that you test on test tiles. I'm actually really tempted to throw out the rest of this glaze, but if this glaze comes out as a banger, I'm gonna regret not having the rest of this. Okay, now all we gotta do is wait till the next glaze kiln load. I'm probably gonna do a tiny bit of a hold at the top of cone six, just to really put this underneath a little bit more stress, and we're gonna see how this glaze comes out. Uh, cue the time skip card. Later. More moments later. Let's take a look at these test dials real quick. And I was actually very surprised at these test dials because as I looked at them at first when I opened the kiln, I was like, oh man, this is just a black glaze. This is lame. I already have a black. But when you look a little bit closer, you see that this is actually a fantastic glaze. It's 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 amazing. It's phenomenal, really, to tell you the truth. Look at all those little red oil spots in there. This is this is great. This one is on the B mix with grog clay body, and you'll see later on. I already pulled some bowls out. The bowls are nothing to laugh at either. The bowls are fantastic as well. But this little texture here that you can see inside the clay body is what we're really looking for. I know there's a lot of light going on right now, so you can't really see it too much. Let me see if I can shield the light from your eyes. Yeah, that's a little bit better. You can really see it now. See that? Oh, that's that's a glaze there. Let's take out the redstone. This one is the glaze with redstone clay, and I really appreciate the fact that it doesn't change. You know what I mean? Like, the glaze just seems to keep on going regardless of what clay body it's on. I'm really happy with that. It means I don't have to go to another store and pick out three different clays for one glaze. The porcelain test style, I'm excited for this one because usually the porcelain comes out way better. Whew, I'm, I'm really excited to look at the bowls of this. Yeah, I think we've got a winner here. I think that I'm going to end up making a bunch of this glaze. You can really see the versatility, especially, I know you guys are only seeing the test styles right now, so you're like, that's just black with some specks in it. What's so cool about that? This is really hard to get for me. <laughs> this, is, this is really, really difficult to get. Uh, an oil spot glaze by itself with one singular glaze. It's really difficult, especially something with a little bit of a tinge of red. Just to show you what I mean, let's take a look at the actual products because there's a teacup in there that I think really illustrates what I'm talking about. I'm actually really happy with the result of how this came out because at first glance, this new oil spot red recipe kind of looks like it was a dud. I opened my kiln and I saw this black here and I was like, cool. It just makes black, that's great. But ho oh, ho, no 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 mon ami. This is why we look closely at things. But I'm really happy about this glaze, because look, this essentially, all by itself, there's no other glaze but this by itself. This, this bowl, and this bowl here are all by themselves. This made exactly what the test style that I saw about it promised me. This is basically an oil spot red glaze. To be fair, I put a pretty thick coat of this stuff on here, but man, look at that. That's almost comparable to Tenmoku Gold. I, I like the way this comes out on smooth, nice clay. Let's check out these two bowls here. This clay had grog in it, so I expected it to act a little bit differently, but in fact, it kind of didn't. It kind of just acted the same exact way it would have acted 
on some type of smoother clay body, which is fantastic for me. It's great simply because now I know that it works on multiple clay bodies. I don't have to go to the store and be like, all right, let me get that for that glaze and that for that glaze. I just know by now that it works on a specific clay body. And oh, look at that. That's fantastic in there. I'll probably put these in the store for later on, but this one cup is gonna be like the test style to base all the others off of. Look, you can kind of see it in the camera. I'm really sorry that there's a glint of light there, but you can definitely see it. This is the glaze with my Lumos. Now my Lumos is one of those things that I like a lot because it makes things oil spot and I really wanted to see what would happen if I put something that makes oil spots with something that makes oil spots. It didn't turn out too great. It kind of overpowered each other. That is a very thick version of the glaze right on top of my Lumos glaze. I'm gonna write this down and hopefully I can keep this in rotation. If it works with enough of these glazes, I can keep it in rotation. That means that all my glazes kind of play along. This is the glaze with my Digital Fire Ultra Clear. It did not go too well. It almost looked like a kind of honey color. It almost looked really nice until I flipped it over and I saw a little bit of crawling right here. And I was like, oh no, I can't use this now. It's okay though, because my Digital Fire Ultra Clear doesn't really work with any of my other glazes anyway. It just likes to be alone and super clear and white. I'll be honest with you, I usually call that glaze my racist glaze because it doesn't like any other colors. It loves to be alone. It thinks it's better when it's alone. And it's just like, it needs to be first. You gotta put the layer on first, otherwise it ruins every other color. <laughs> Also, I call it my racist glaze. It's too bad because the inside looked really nice. It almost looks like Tenmoku gold without any of the gold specs. But I'm probably just going to put this in the go away pile. Um, I'm going to document it, put it down. Don't mix with ultra clear, you know, as I usually assume. Most of my glazes don't work with that glaze anyway, so it, I, I kind of assume that in the first place, but it's good to write it down. This bowl here was the oil spot red with the floating blue that I have in my rotation. It didn't really do anything. I'm really surprised at this. Um, this glaze seems to either be a catalyst for bringing out greatness or it just dies flat on everything. So by itself it's fantastic, don't get me wrong. But this is my floating blue glaze with that oil spot red. You can see it kind of tried something right there, didn't really work out too well. I put it specifically on the rim and one gash or two here, didn't really do anything. I would love to say more about it, but like legitimately the, the floating blue just took over this glaze. This of course is B-Mix, but like it just it just didn't do anything. Like the floating blue literally just kicked it out of its house. <laughs> this one was a little bit interesting. This one was Jeff Campana's gray, you know, one of my favorite glazes. And I put that glaze a little bit on the rim. The gray doesn't really matter. The gray has been coming out fine for centuries and aeons and millions of years. It turned out great, actually. It turned out strangely fine. I do wonder what would happen if I coated the entire thing, but it's good to know that it doesn't outright reject it. Just putting it on the rim is not a very good barometer for how well it would do on the entire body. It might just mess up in the middle or on the inside, much like my Tenmoku Gold, which looks really good on the inside, and on the outside, it looks kind of crummy half the time. We really gotta test this on an entire body with this combination, because this might be fantastic. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. This is the one that I wanted. This is the thing that I was like, oh yeah, this is the goodness. This and the three other test styles, as well as bowls and things that I've made today, really illustrate to me that I could make this glaze and not have to worry about a good amount of my pieces going in. So thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I really hope you guys enjoy the recipe. I know a lot more of you like it when I review glazes that come off of the shelf other than recipe glazes, but once in a while I like to go to my Discord and add a bunch of recipes for people who are really looking to be self-sustainable as a maker, as a crafter, and control their glazes from the inside out. And a recipe is one of the easiest things you can do. Just put chemicals together, make colors, test it, and send them out there. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really hope that you guys have a good time experimenting with this glaze, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. If you mix it with anything else over time, historically speaking, it'll probably ruin it.